Hey, what is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having an amazing day because about a week ago something finally came in for the Supra and I'm just now getting around to getting a chance to get it installed. So here we are, probably the world's most expensive lollipop sent over from our friends at AWE. I did go ahead and open this package because when it arrived it was pretty rough. As you can see it was torn open, uh, taped like crazy from our friends at FedEx. So I had to make sure everything was there. I'm pretty sure we've got it all. Uh, we will find out today. I went ahead, I've got the super jacked up. I went ahead and I've just kind of took a look around, see where the brackets are and everything, see where it's being supported. Toyota doesn't use these. Instead, they just jack your car up. Uh, let me show you. It's not that bad, but you can see they didn't use adapters to jack up the car when it went, when they were checking it out. I'm honestly not sure why they jacked it up in the first place, but they damaged it um, when I first lowered the car afterwards. The adapter got stuck in there because it's a pretty tight fit now. I won't be taking the car to a Toyota again. Uh, they have no idea what to do about the oil uh, consumption. And I'm honestly not worried about it at this point. I'll just keep adding oil once a month, whatever the case may be. Um, and after they treated the car that way, probably won't be doing that again. But nonetheless, guys, let's go ahead and get started. So check these guys out. Massive five inch tips. So what I went ahead and I started doing was, this is the controller for the valves. You need to go ahead and start the car up, put it in sport mode, and so that the way this turns on. And then we've got this plate that we will mount to it to keep it in that on position. And then we'll tuck it somewhere in here, we'll take that off, whatever. Alright guys, so I figure I'll get you a little bit of idle. This is sport mode right now, valve is open. All right, so this is what it's going to look like. I mean, no big deal, you know. And we're going to tuck it down in there. So that is held on by three eight millimeters little screws there. And you'll just pull it right down. It could be a little more gentle than that, but then uh, put the screws back in and that'll be done, tucked away. That'll work like normal so the computer thinks it's closing the valves. I don't I'm going to assume they send that because it'll probably throw a code. I. Uh, it came with it, so I'm not really going to find out. Might as well use it. Alright guys, we might as well get a couple of revs in uh, with nothing on there. don't like it. <laughs> no? Why? Oh, no. I, there's no tone to it. I mean, clearly, yeah. there, there's nothing there. Yeah. Um, Alright, let's go ahead and get those on. Okay, so this is actually a couple days later. The exhaust is installed, but we're missing one little thing. This bag right here? It mounts the tips, so I've been riding around with no tips, and I didn't line the exhaust yet because, well, I didn't have the tips to make sure it was all good. But now that I have the exhaust on, I wanted to go over some of the things that I found to be pretty helpful and things I ran into when I was installing it. You'll have one clamp here from the downpipe to the exhaust. You'll have this one mounting the exhaust up to the car, and now let's go over to the other side so we can see the rest of it. Okay, so the next tip that I gotta see is this crossbar. Take it off. You're gonna have two of these. Uh, I did not have a socket that fits this. Instruction says an E14 socket. Um, honestly, looks like a little Torx head. I didn't have one, so I didn't take it off. And let me tell you, it was annoying, so take it off. So we're ahead of time. I tried searching, nobody locally sold that. Uh, at least when I took a quick look, nobody had it. So I was like, eh, well, let's just try it without it. And let me tell you, it will make your life so much better, so much better, if you just take it off. Okay, the next thing is this bracket right here. I thought I had to take both of the nuts off, and you don't. You actually only have to take off that first one, which if I remember correctly, let me see if it was a 13. 
yeah, it's a 13 millimeter. I think pretty much most of the hardware on the uh, stock system was a 13 millimeter. Um, you only have to take off that one. It takes off, it comes apart right there. I thought it was just one big piece, so I took the whole thing off just to find out I could put it right back. So the stock mufflers, if you don't take off that crossbar, will hit your diffuser. You won't be able to pull the exhaust straight out when you do it. See, I actually scraped it a little bit. Nothing a little bit of sanding won't fix, but it, you, you can avoid that completely. Just take that crossbar off. The downpipe has that little flex to it, which will allow the system to come down, and then you can just pull it right out. Don't be stubborn. Just do it. But that's pretty much it for the removal. There was, you know, nothing too crazy with this one. Super, super simple. Um, the only thing that's going to slow you down is being stubborn. I would recommend. Uh, so what I did was at the mid pipe down here, if you're going to leave the exhaust in at the mid pipe um, right above the crossbar, I put it my one of my jacks sideways here to hold the stock exhaust up to help me, either, that way it didn't pull too hard on this and it was able to come down a little bit easier. It'll help out just a bit um, to give you a little bit of room to pull that thing out. Once you have the stock system out, you might want to grab a buddy. So I had gone ahead and put in the exhaust piece by piece with one of my friends, he came over. I was planning on doing it all by myself, didn't realize the pain in the butt was going to be to hold a piece and up and while you're trying to put in the next piece and bolt down the clamp. Just make a friend, have him come over. Them. If you do take off the crossbar, you might be able to pre-assemble the AW exhaust and then go ahead and put it in. Um, might be easier that way, but still recommend at least putting down a tarp or something so that you don't scrape up the exhaust. Let's get this thing tightened up and get some sound clips going here. Alrighty, so this is the hardware that you'll get to mount the tips. I'm gonna, I went ahead and kind of put them on. They're not aligned yet, but I figured it'll be easier to align once they're on. Uh, it looks like I'll have to lift this side up a bit. So now we're gonna rotate the exhaust so that we can clamp those down. So the entire exhaust for the AWE system uses 15 millimeter bolts. All right, boys, she's all buckled up. Let's get her started on, baby boy. Holy cow guys, it sounds amazing with the new exhaust, like it has woken up so, so much. Oh man, I am not disappointed. I'll admit, before I got the tips on and I was driving around with it like that, I was kind of like, oh, it's, it's really rattly, I'm not sure about this, but it's amazing. I'll have a video up soon of actual flybys, exhaust notes, everything you guys want to see and have a nice review of the AW exhaust soon. I honestly can't thank AWE enough for partnering up with the channel and making this possible. Like, huge shout out to those guys. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to all of you. I can't believe how much we've grown in this past year. So as a huge thank you to all of you, I've decided when I hit 500 subs, I wanna do a giveaway. Not sure what it's gonna be yet. I will hopefully figure that out very, very soon. I will let you guys know what it's gonna be. As soon as we hit 500 subs, one of you guys, I will send you something as a huge thank you for all of your support. As always guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for future content. I'll catch you on the next video.